What is going on everybody? Welcome to another Python 3 tutorial video. In this video what we're going to be talking about is uh, the standard library with Python. Uh, most importantly here what we're going to be talking about is some of the built-in functions. Uh, so these are functions that you won't actually have to ever do any imports with. So that's like, you know, print and stuff like that. Uh, by no means are we going to cover them all. I'll put a link in the description to all of them. Uh, there's, you know, the Python 3 documentation. So you can look through all of them. There are some that are a little bit more advanced than others. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to cover some of the more basic ones that I personally have found to be useful uh, over the years of programming in Python. Um, this video, actually, we're going to cover all of the ones I want to cover <clears throat> in just one video. And then, uh, then we're going to be talking a little bit more about the standard library, uh, some of the functions that we can import, or modules, rather, that we can import. So these are just functions that are just built-in functions. And then there's also built-in modules uh, that we're going to import and you know like OS, sys, URL lib. Uh, some of these are really really powerful and not too many people have uh, very extensive tutorials on how to use these built-in modules but you can actually do a lot of really really cool things with these so uh, that's what you guys have to look forward to but for now we're just gonna be talking about these built-in functions so let's go ahead and get started. So uh, here we've got just an empty empty script we're just gonna just run through them. Uh, the best way I can think of it is just pretty much to do an alphabetical order uh, the first one is absolute value. So absolute value is basically um, you take any any number and the absolute value of that number is its distance from zero. So basically uh, you would use absolute value if you always want a positive number. Uh, that's at least how I think of it. But in theory, its definition is if it's different uh, is distance from zero. But for example, we can say example uh, num one equals negative five. Example num two equals five. And what we can do is we can print the abs. So abs uh, is that function, which stands for absolute value. And we can print abs x num one. And for now, let's go ahead and save and run that. See what it looks like. Sure enough, it's just, it's just a regular five, positive five. So then we can also do a conditional and ask if these are the same. And so we can say if abs eggs num one is identical to eggs num two, print, um, I don't know, we could just say uh, these are the same, something simple like that. Um, so we can just save and run that just to make sure uh, these are valued as the same and they sure are obviously. So that's the first one, just uh, simple absolute values. Now the next one that I want to show you guys, I guess for, to start we can actually continue on in our little interactive interpreter here. Um, and that's the help function. Uh, this is probably one of the most uh, underutilized functions in Python. Some people, myself included actually, uh, just use Google. <laughs> so if I want help on a function or like want to find the documentation on a function, I just type that function into Google and I learn about it. I just type the function name and then Python and Google. Uh, but there is the help function. And if you put empty parameters in here, it just starts you off um, almost basically like a search bar. So we could type in URL lib, for example, and we could get information on URL lib. We could type in time, get information on the time function, you know, especially like with what each of these mean, you know, percent year, you know, percent uppercase Y, percent lowercase Y, blah, 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 blah. Um, basically all that kind of data that we want to get on it. The other thing that we could do, just hit control C to break out of that and we've left help. The other thing we could do is uh, if you want to get the answer right away, you could do help and then in parentheses time like that. Oh, what happened here? Oh, okay. <laughs> First we'll have to import time and then we'll do help time like that. And here we have the information again, the same information we were just looking at. So the help module is just kind of a, a great way to get documentation on a module that maybe you're not too familiar with. Um, so definitely check that out if you're uh, working with a module and you're maybe thinking that you want to do something or you don't know anything about that module or um, maybe you're looking for something specific or you just want to learn a little bit more about it. Uh, check out the uh, built-in help function. The next thing I want to cover here is maximum and minimum. Um, I suppose we can continue on in this interactive interpreter. I just don't like that it's always at the bottom. Um, maybe I'll scroll it up here. Okay. Since these are built-in functions, what's the? It's not a big deal to work with this. So let's say example list equals. Uh, then we're gonna just do this. 
Um, so that's our example list. So it's just a string of numbers. Um, you can immediately find the minimum and the maximum of this list by doing the following. So x, actually let's just print it out. So print uh, max and then x list and that will print the maximum number, so 8. And then conversely, uh, if you're not familiar, if, you wanna, if you're in the interactive interpreter and you want to get the last line again, you can hold Alt, press P, and that brings up what you previously had. And you can just come over here, let's just change this to minimum. Hit enter, and our, we find our minimum to be zero. Okay, that makes a whole lot of sense. <laughs> now, um, so that's max and min, I use those pretty often. Uh, the next thing uh, that we want to cover here is rounding. You can round numbers, so we could say x equals 5.622, and then print, uh, we can print round, X like that and that will obviously round up conversely say uh, X was not 5.622 but 5.222 and then we did print round X we get five so it rounds up and down um, I'm not gonna show them here but there's also you can use you can import math and do math.seal 5.66 uh, for example um, I guess we can do it real quick uh, it's been a while since I've used this, but I'm pretty sure you would just do so. Import math, um, and then print math dot. Uh, we'll do math dot floor first, and we'll do x. That should work for us. So we get five. Um, then you can do uh, text um, seal like that. And you get six. So floor and seal, basically what they'll do is they'll round for you up and down. Now, again, I just want to stress this isn't a built-in function. It, math comes with it, and that's part of the standard library. Uh, but this isn't a built-in function, but I figure while we're talking about rounding, uh, we might as well uh, consider sealing and floor. So sometimes you always want to round up. Sometimes you always want to round down. And so like that's how you can, that's how you can do that. Um, but anyway, again, math isn't really built-in function. I just felt like that was a good time to cover it. Uh, the next thing that we can do is converting data types around. Um, so we can do all sorts of things. So for example, we could say int me equals uh, 55 like that. So int me is a string, but we could convert that, let's say, to a number. So we could say um, print uh, int, int, empty parameters, but we'll fill them with int me. And now uh, the string 55 has been converted to the integer of 55. We could also uh, do the same thing. And instead of converting it to an integer, we could say we want to make it a float. So it should come out as 55.0. Sure enough, we've converted it to a float. Um, we can also take, um, you know, we can say string me equals 50. Well, we'll do 77. And we could print the string version of string me and it's 77 like that um, for whatever reason it's not putting quotes around it like we want but I promise you it is a string <laughs> so anyway uh, as long as they can be converted to and from each other um, the, you know like you can't take high and convert it to a, uh, an int right so you can't say uh, print in high right that's not gonna work because you can't do that it's not convertible to an integer but as long as it can be converted it will be converted with some of these so I did just want to cover uh, that stuff so just a quick recap through everything we had well we started with absolute absolute values um, and just just in case someone is not curious is a little curious about absolute values at least for my my uses, I use absolute values a lot because like, if I'm doing percent change, for example, um, if we go, let's say we try to calculate the percentage change from negative six to or from negative nine, let's say, uh, to negative six, for example, uh, it's going to call this an act actually a negative 33 percent change, even though that's not true. It was a positive 33 percent change. Um, it's going to call it a negative. So it was not a negative movement. It was a positive movement. Uh, so if you're ever doing percent change with negatives, I use absolute value bars. Um, there's many other reasons why you would use absolute values uh, as well, but that's just a quick example of why I use it. Um, 
Then we did help. Um, so anytime you have a function that maybe you don't know much about, you can use the help command. Um, pretty much with anything within the standard Python library, you can use it on. And there's it's, it's good information. It would behoove you to use it from time to time. Um, then after that, converting from strings, ints, all that, maximum, minimum, rounding, and then ceiling and floor with math. So anyway, that's going to conclude this tutorial. Sorry if it uh, was a little long. Looks like we're about 10 minutes or 10 and a half minutes, but pretty much covered all the built-in functions. Again, I'll put a link in the description. Uh, if I forget, someone remind me and I'll put it in there. I, I like to forget um, to all the other ones. But then what we're going to be doing in the next uh, few videos is talking about uh, OS, Sys, and then we'll hit URL lib. Um, all these really, really great modules, and it's good to learn a lot about them because you can do a lot of really cool stuff with them. So anyway, stay tuned for that. If you guys have any questions or comments on this video, uh, feel free to leave them below. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions, and until next time.